Good uh, morning. Thank you all for coming in such uh, high numbers. Uh, my name is Kazimir Koolman. I will uh, present today and um, together with me some colleagues will do some uh, presentations. Um, let's go through the, the program. Most of you hopefully already have seen this. Uh, first we will start with uh, Herbert Koolman. He will uh, tell you some more, something more about the novel tools and the methods in PyS, but also the collaboration in the interfacing with other software packages. Um, then uh, Mark will come. He will tell more about support and uh, implementation. Then around half past 12, we will have lunch uh, upstairs. It's uh, where you came in. Uh, you make a U-turn and then uh, right uh, above here. Um, next to the uh, uh, after the lunch, we will have three separate parallel workshops. Um, here, the uh, Propdam workshop will be given. In the middle one, uh, local bias, and in the uh, on the back, uh, fairway. Uh, please uh, see your stickers and uh, colors on the on the windows to make sure in which uh, room you have to be. Then at three o'clock, we have coffee and tea. Um, after the coffee and tea, it's not finished. Uh, we will still have some tips and tricks. We will do a layout battle, and we will finish off with Herbert again uh, with the Tell Me presentation. Um, and quarter uh, past four, we will have drinks. So thank you all, and um, that's about the program. Um, most of you already know Sark, so I don't have to introduce Sark. Maybe it's interesting to know who is working at Sark. Um, at the left top, you see uh, Herbert Koolman. Uh, next to it uh, is Marion Goldijn. Uh, then uh, Guido Fijn uh, with Mark Visser and Bart next to him. Then on the middle row, uh, Bastian Velo, our programmer in Norway. He couldn't come today, so he's not here. Then uh, Dao Plukkel, Johannes van Houten and myself, Kazimir Koolman. And on the bottom row, we have Abraham de Ronde, Maria Ardovani. Uh, Victor de Graaf and Justin Paf. Um, that's it for me. The, now I will give the word to uh, to Herbert Koeman. Good morning. Can anybody? Uh, can everybody hear me? Infected? Okay. Uh, good morning, all of you. Uh, my name is Herbert Kuhlman. Casimir already uh, told you that. Um, I'm going to introduce to you uh, some of the new functionalities we have been working on in Pias, and we are still working on tools, method, collaboration, and uh, interfacing. But. Before I, uh, I'm going to do that, I want to uh, give a little elucidation on the structure of the presentations of this morning, because they are structured. Uh, in this, that's depicted in this uh, diagram. Um, what you see around in the gray circle is the implementation. That's what you see in day-to-day -day usage of uh, PIAS and local PIAS. But inside is, of course, the program that you cannot see, but also, also some ideas and notions that I will explain a uh, little bit. And uh, can I see, can, can the letters here also grotter or not? Yeah, that I can here can read, otherwise I'm always with my head. Uh, yeah. The people who know me know that my eyes are not very good. That's sufficient for 43 years of programming. <laughs> yeah, okay, thank you. This uh, picture has uh, eight uh, elements. Again, in the outer ring, uh, the implementation, the look and feel of the program. Then the middle ring has uh, three elements. 
it's the environment, the external environment, the, the, the world that we are part of, that we are all part of. Uh, secondly, the tools and methods in the software, the, the tools and methods created by Sark, the support we can give on the software. And these uh, three elements have some areas of uh, overlap uh, between two segments. And deep inside is the aim of the software. That's the, that's the yellow uh, part. And what's the aim? Well, it's a bit of metaphysical, but the aim that, that we uh, have set ourselves at SARC is that the software must be suitable for all types of, not only ships, but all kinds of floating objects. We once have done floating swimming pool or flood barriers, everything that floats is a ship in our opinion. It should be uh, versatile and suitable for uh, many applications and uh, preferences. It should be comprehensible without too much explanation, without too much uh, guidance, uh, although there is a manual. Um, we try to, to, to minimize user time. Uh, we, uh, w when designing fairway, we try to minimize mouse centimeters. That's the, uh, the, 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 the amount of centimeters that the user uh, is moving with his mouse during the design of the ship. Uh, compatible, no laughter. We try to be as compatible as possible. Uh, however, that's different in, the, in this ever-changing uh, ever world. And we try to make the software as fast as possible. Talking about um, compatibility, um, that's mainly uh, also an aspect of the environment. Uh, there is a large world around us, uh, the society, but also the computer world, which is more or less out of control for SARC. Um, the world of rules and regulations, uh, sometimes we try to help a little bit with designing the regulations, uh, but our influence is not, uh, is, is, is not large in that, uh, in that respect. Uh, the pure existence of classification societies and their behavior, their behavior is also out of control. Uh, the systems around ICT operating systems, uh, the programming languages, the technical standards, uh, standards, and the levels of education, that's all a given that we, we all, as we are uh, the, the together here, uh, have to deal with. That the support, that's this uh, green, green slice, uh, the support we give, that's not out of control, we do, uh, try to give as good su uh, support as possible. Uh, f by, for example, providing the software to tools and uh, to, to, to schools and to university, not, not only in the Netherlands but also uh, abroad, for free. They don't have to pay. Uh, I saw this application from uh, Gdansk University last week. Uh, a help desk, you can call us, we have a tel telephone number. Exercise material, that will be explained later on by Mark. Uh, the manual and the movies and the clips, that will also be presented by Mark Fisser. Uh, he comes next to me, or after me. And then, uh, my, my presentation, the tools and methods, the modeling function, functions we are using, we try to make fast and robust algorithms, and the library of support functions. Well, that's more or less uh, our position now in this um, diagram. In between uh, these segments, there are transitions. Um, the transition between environment and tools of method, uh, that's the world of interfacing and collaboration, and collaboration between computer programs and between uh, uh, persons. That's partly under our control, so I will uh, elaborate a, a little bit on that uh, in a few moments. Um, uh, for example, uh, we try to adhere as much as uh, S the standards from the outside world. So we have a new piping mod module, which is uh, mimicked uh, according to an ISO standard. So if that's available, we try to make use of that. Between support and tools of method, there is also a gradual transition because the more the method itself is user-friendly, the less support it requires. So that is also uh, gradually. And between environment and support, there is a sharp transition. Uh, for example, SARC can offer no support on working with Rhino. Uh, neither does SARC have much influence on the uh, behavior of classification society. It's a pity sometimes. Uh, users ask us, can you help us in that respect? Yeah, the answer is simply no. We have no, uh, although we would like to do that. 
we have no influence on that. And then, again, the outer ring, the implementation, that's what you see, the look and, the, the look and feel of the program, the functions, the features, the licensing mechanism, et cetera, et cetera. That will be uh, discussed further by Mark Fisser. Okay, so now my part, the tools and methods in Pias and uh, local Pias, the uh, write-up slice. From time to time, we make some changes in the program. Recently, for example, um, the, the implicit and automated addition of appendages, uh, direct tank, tank calculations, and a new foundation of local PIAS container modules. And people ask us from time to time, why? Why do you make uh, those changes? Because we have not asked for that. That means the users have not asked for it. Well, simply because of the reason that we try to make it better. For example, this automatic addition of appendages. Uh, people who no work with PIAS know that uh, a ship is defined on the sections. It's open at the top and it can be closed with a standard appendage. Uh, for example, a deck house, deck camber or, or a hatch. Uh, and with the old system, the adding and removing required user action. So that means that the user has to press a button, add appendage, and there was another function, a remove appendage. And of course, that, work, that works since 1985. But it has the risk of uh, inconsistencies. For example, if you define the uh, dim dimensions of an appendage and forgot this uh, remove add uh, command, then the uh, appendage was not really added to the ship. And it required uh, user intervention. A user has to press add. And especially in combination with fairway, it, that's a disturbance of the process. So for that reason, we have changed that. Uh, and now the appendage is always uh, added, always visible also with uh, fairway. And it's always consistent. And that was the, impro the improvement we were looking for. Uh, and nobody asked us to do, so, us to do so, but we thought it would be wise. Um, for that, uh, this is an example. This is the ship without appendage, and now I, uh, I, I added a deck uh, camber to make it a little, mid, a little bit better visually. It's a bit of an exaggerated deck camber of one seventh of the breadth of the vessel. I know I'm a shipbuilder. It, usually, it's one fiftieth, but this is one seventh, so quite a round deck camber here, and that's automatically added. Um, then it appeared that uh, this one, that uh, the dimension, the, 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 the coordinates of the deck camber was were previously in the old days visible in the list, and some users used those coordinates. It was not necessary for bias, but for, for whatever reason they used it. Uh, they complained that the coordinates were missing because here the appendix started and there were no coordinates uh, anymore. And for their comfort. We have added a bit of functionality that the coordinates are still visible, although in gray, so they cannot be changed anymore. Well, that's, uh, it's for, for, for Pius, it's not necessary, but as a kind of service, we have, uh, we have done that. Uh, another change is direct tank, tank calculation. Uh, tanks used to be uh, computed on uh, with uh, pre-calculated tables uh, that also required a user interaction calculate tank table, uh, which uh, caused uh, interpolation accuracy that has been changed. And now uh, Spires works with direct tank calculations, so no pre-calculations are available uh, anymore. For those who wish to stick to the old method, I don't know why, but if somebody would like the use of pre-calculated table, there is still this setting, you can set it on and off. And then we developed a new container module, which uh, supports all kinds, all sizes of containers, uh, longitudinally positioned or transverse uh, positions, uh, because the, 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 the old uh, container module was very uh, much uh, uh, designed around slots, and the new one is designed around casting. So a ship is equipped with castings, and on the castings you can put containers, uh, and the, the, the program automatically finds out which size of containers fits in, fits in which castings combination. So and this is an example. Uh, this is a, 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 a few on the GUI of the container module, but Abraham de Ronde in the afternoon will go into detail in local bias and also show this uh, function. Well, and in this fashion, we are going to integrate a lot of 
local PIAs, loading modules. Uh, now we, the, the container has been finalized, lashing has been finalized, but also Roro, Crane, Cargo. Uh, so we had, or local PIAs had separated modules, each with an independent GUI, and those are being replaced by more integrated loading support modules. Which brings me to an intermezzo. People ask us sometimes, why modules? Why do you have modules in PIAS and local PIAS anyway? Uh, this is the main screen of PIAS. These are the modules. Uh, you, most of you might know them. And why, do you, why don't you have one program? Well, there is one simple reason for that. It would be too much. It would simply be too much, for not for a computer, but for a human being it would be too much. PIAS has around 250 menus or more. And, and hundreds of, of editing, computation, and visualization functions. And if you would all put it into one big program, uh, one, one screen, then you would, would get totally lost. So for uh, that reason, bias and also local bias is centered around modules. Also because people are often bis um, engaged in a subtask, for example, divining the compartments or making intextability calculation. Well, then you start up the module for compartments or for intextability calculation. That's the end of my intermezzo. And this is a reminder for me to take a glass of water. <laughs> OK. See what we have here. Balanced advice is a new function we have been working on. Uh, of, of course, if you, everybody knows, if you play with the content of ballast tanks, then you can compute uh, draft and trim. But you can also reverse this uh, with this ballast advice module. So, given a desired draft and trim uh, typed in by the user, um, a user can play with the ballast tanks. That's one way to do that. But if you use the balance advice function, then the program sorts out automatically uh, what the optimal distribution of ballast over the ballast tanks is. And not only with one ballast tanks, because then, then it's a simple matter, but also with two, four, eight, 10, 12, 11, can also be an odd number. Uh, we, we, we made this originally for the uh, Dutch uh, submarines. Uh, they have trim tanks uh, inside, and it is a very sensitive uh, equilibrium for a submarine uh, submerged. But now it's available also in uh, PIAS and in local PIAS. And this is an example of a new type of algorithms, uh, optimization algorithm. Actually, it's an optimization algorithm. Although the, these days, the, uh, everybody calls everything artificial intelligence. And the uh, segregation to optimization and artificial intelligence is not so large anymore. So you might also call it AI although I like the word optimization because that's what it is. And it uh, automates the uh, human labor, and in that way we try to support the user. This ballast optimization is linked to trim optimization, for, uh, that's for local PIAS. Um, as you know, the resistance of the ship may be dependent from the trim, uh, and that is uh, also, of course, a minimization function if this is trim and this is resistant. You want to achieve the low of you, 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 you achieve the lowest resistance at this trim, so that's uh, answer one to the question of optimization. And then is the question how to achieve that tri uh, that uh, trim? Well, by the ballast optimization function. So in this in that respect, the two are uh, are linked. And this has been developed uh, the past six months or something. Another subject is a subject of interest is multi-threading. Although I uh, expressed our um, uh, devotion to uh, fast computation, a lot of computations are still quite uh, computation intensive, especially demiscibility calculations, and especially because people tend to do more and more and more and more damage cases and demiscibility calculations. And uh, there is a partial solution out of that, and that's using multi-threading, where, uh, the, where the computational load is spread over multiple cores. Unfortunately, computers are uh, equipped with more and more and more cores. Uh, so in PIAS, we um, implemented dual threading, so it's two cores, some 
20 years ago or 15 years ago. Octo trading with eight and virginity trading with 20 cores. Uh, unfortunately for us, uh, it does not scale. It's not that if you have uh, made the program for two cores that you change the number of two into eight and then you have a trade court because each uh, number of threads has its own um, optimum. So partially it should be redesigned for, um, for, for, for when you add more and more uh, cores. And another unfortunate fact is that multithreading only works with independent software parts. If you have two parts of software which are dependent from each other, for example in an iteration where the, where the run of the next iteration is dependent from the outcome of the previous iteration, that you cannot uh, multithread because uh, yeah, the, the, the second iteration has to wait for the first, so you cannot start the second before the first is ready. So only independent parts can be uh, multithreaded, and it's our task to identify those uh, parts. But uh, we, we spent quite some, uh, quite some time on that. Uh, also to show the uh, user what the computer is doing, because if you have 20 cores, you get, yeah, you, you, you used to see dots on the screen, but you get a little bit lost what the computer was actually doing. And for that, we developed this uh, thread monitor. Here are 19 threads. You can see with which damage case uh, they are, on which damage case they are working, and the time it started, and some more uh, things that it's calculating. Fortunately, it's calculating. Um, and at this moment, uh, the, the damage stability was multi-threaded over the uh, angles of, of, of inclination, and now we are uh, developing and testing um, the, the damage stability uh, over the, 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 the distributed over complete damage cases, and that will make it, I guess, twice as fast, something like uh, something like that. Uh, compared, if you have a machine with 20 cores, as we have in the office. Then uh, Vincenti trading, so there's 20 cores, will be a factor 15 to 18 faster compared with a single course machine because there's some performance being lost in overhead. Another subject, I, I'm going fast, and for that I need sometimes a glass of water. Uh, compartments connection exists in, uh, in PIAS for. Um, already for 20 years or 25 years, something like that. It's for damage stability. Uh, it's quite obvious that if a compartment gets damaged and it's connected to another compartment, then the other compartment is also flooded and that has effect on the damage stability. So for that reason, we introduced the connection between compartments uh, 20 years ago. It's a virtual connection, so it's not really a pipe or you, you don't know how it's connected. You simply say this compartment is connected to that compartment. Um, okay, but it works. And you set it in text, so you can get a table of that. Uh, and you can even define a connection point, so that the software can determine if the water level is below that point, then it's the connection is not present. And if, uh, if it rises above that the point, then it's connected. Um, and it, uh, this elder system also supports the uh, computation of the time to equalization uh, and probabilistic damage stability rules. It's stated that equalization should take place within 10 minutes while well, you can compute that with uh, bias. And this works. It is uh, widely used. Um, although it has been designed for an occasional connection, one or two or five, not for a massive application. It works if you want. You can connect hundreds of uh, tags mutually. But uh, it, then you lose a little bit the uh, oversight. So what we have done is uh, making a completely new system uh, based on pipes, piping uh, pipes or, uh, or uh, openings that can be modeled as uh, pipes. So you can pipes and piping networks between tanks and compartments and also to the outside. So you, so you can connect the tank by a pipe through to the, uh, to the sea water. From these uh, pipes you can define uh, shapes, you can insert uh, valves in it, non-return valves, uh, pressure relief devices. Um, but uh, as I just said, it has been designed for pipes, 
but also other openings can be modeled in. So if you have a door, an open door, you can model it with four short pipes in the, in the, in the corners, and then, okay, and then you have made a good model of that uh, open door. This system has an integrated GUI, so you can see graphically what you are doing, although the output is uh, also in tables and in uh, graphs. And this is what I said in the introduction, using a database structure, which is inspired on an ISO standard. This is the ISO standard for chemical plants, and we use this as, as much as possible. And of course, the piping system in, an, in a ship is fundamentally not different than a piping system in, an, uh, in a chemical plant. And this is all uh, explained in the manual. Well, this is how the GUI looks like. Uh, the, the, the numerical input is the, are the particulars of the pipes, so their positions and the types, and their uh, their their resistance uh, resistance factors, if applicable. And this is a visual depiction of the piping step, uh, system. And these, well, it's badly visible here, but this is uh, an existing a bias compartment, so this pipe here is connected to that compartment, because that was the whole idea, that the pipes serve here as compartment connection. This is the output on the piece of paper, so you can insert this in the uh, report, in the damage stability uh, report in the future. Well, it's simply the same information as, as here on the screen, but then formatted uh, on paper. This uh, GUI uh, exists right now, and uh, we uh, make the uh, uh, application in PIAS gradually. Uh, so in the first place, this piping system will be an alternative for the conventional connection system, as I've just uh, described, uh, the connection system that's used for deterministic and probabilistic damage stability. It will be used for systematic time domain computations, so the previous module was also capable of doing a time domain calculation, but it was a separate calculation, not connected to any other calculation. But here you can make a probabilistic damage stability calculation, including the time domain calculation and its consequences. So uh, that's the second step uh, we will be, uh, that we'll be uh, doing. And uh, thirdly, uh, that effect will be translated in the question which damage stability criteria to use. So if the uh, flooding takes place within the 10 minutes, then uh, you are allowed to use uh, final stage of flooding criteria, and otherwise you should use intermediate stage of flooding criteria, but that will all be pre-programmed in the software. So that makes the whole process of making a damage stability calculation much more smoothly, because you don't have to interfere as a human being and, and afterwards check the uh, time required for equalization and uh, take the consequences of uh, that. And fourthly, we will also make damage two pipes. Uh, so now there are only damages to compartments. So the, 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 the off boundary of the damage is on a compartment bulkhead and the four boundary on a bulkhead and upper and, and, and inner also on bulkheads. But then there will, uh, the, 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 the damages will also be determined uh, by just hitting a pipe or just not hitting a pipe. Uh, so that will make the computations much more accurate uh, at the price of computation time. So it's, yeah, it makes that you as a human being uh, has, uh, has uh, uh, less to do because you can do the computer let the work, but the computer has more to do. That's, that's what it is. But then you can do something else, take free or something. Uh, the effect on the, the damage stability calculations uh, of these pipes, it's a long story, I'm not going to uh, discuss that here, it's, but it is, oh, it is elaborated in the, in the manual, this is the manual, and this is the beginning of the elaboration, just to show that it's there. Uh, it has some consequences on the GZ curve, obviously, uh, if a pipe is uh, submerged, then a second compartment can be flooded, which is not necessarily progressive flooding. It can be that the uh, uh, stability becomes a little bit worse, the GZ comes a little bit lower, and then the GZ curve simply continues. This is also explained in the manual how the software behaves then, because there are a number of choices to be made here. That's explained in the manual. And at this moment we are testing 
the, all these algorithms. So the definition uh, menu I showed you earlier is already is ready for, for a number of years now. And now we are testing it with some 50 different uh, cases. And that this testing takes place uh, not with a uh, particular bias module. Because there are so many options and details, so we start the testing with a bias module, with a bias damage stability module. Um, but then to uh, verify the correctness of the software, you need so many details that are not outputted by the bias module. So we made a, di a different test program, which is suitable for uh, repeated and automated re-verification, for uh, in the first place verification, but in the long run, re-verification of the underlying algorithms. And we have a document for that. This is the, test, the testing document. It's very dull. We start with a, a barge and then a ship uh, with consecutive flooding, one additional point in the middle. All the things you can, you, you can think of uh, are uh, described here. And in the, the, the results are written to files, and these are automatically compared with previous files. And this goes on and on. This is number 101. This is, this is really dull, but it is, it is necessary to do that. Uh, why do we do this in this fashion? It's a bit different than we did before, uh, because it allows us to do systematic and regular testing. Um, because uh, in cases of multiple spaces and pipes uh, and components can have very uh, unexpected uh, effects. To be honest, when we started with this, uh, the came results, and I thought by myself, well, this cannot be correct. I had the feeling that it was not correct. And every time I was wrong. If you dig into it, then you see, yeah, it's, it's, it's a quite logical, logical behavior. So for this reason, it is, uh, this is all uh, documented. And uh, available for future use and reuse. What are we going to do with this? Um, the first two steps are uh, incorporated in PIAS later this year, so you understand that the GUI is ready, the uh, calculation algorithms are ready, the testing is ready, and now we are going to uh, hang this new functionality in uh, PIAS. In the first stage, as an alternative to the conventional connection system we had in deterministic and probabilistic damage stability, and secondly, for systematic time domain uh, computations. Uh, by the way, we will not uh, say goodbye to the older connections mechanism. There will be a switch. Do, do you want to use the old or do you want to use the new, uh, the new? But it will be obviously that the old will not further be developed. And when this release uh, will be announced, that will be uh, later, later this year, it will be uh, accompanied by an offer for a training course where we go into the details that I described in the manual that I just uh, went over very quickly. Uh, will be explained quietly. Then, on design automation, I have two examples. Um, we had a, we, did, we developed a module called uh, constraint management in 2011. It essentially balances uh, deck and bulkhead positions to achieve uh, required properties of a ship, so required areas, deck areas, or tank volumes, etc. And it, of course, you, you, you can also do that manual, manually. You can play with the position of bulkheads and decks. Uh, that's what you usually do as a ship designer until you have the uh, required uh, fuel capacity, for example. But you can also specify on forehand the required fuel cap capacity and let the computer do the work. Uh, so that automates the iterative and tedious manual labor. You don't have to use it. You can do it by hand, but this goes quicker. Uh, there is a white paper on that. It's on our website. The slides will be distributed, and if you then click on that white paper, then you go to the... This is a link. You, go, you come by that white paper. Uh, a second example is uh, of, of design automation. Uh, we are working, working on uh, currently with a graduate student, uh, uh, a very gifted graduate student, I may say, <laughs> uh, from uh, Rotterdam University of Applied Science. It's research into reinforced learning, and this falls in the category of machine learning and uh, optimization. Also uh, aimed at probabilistic damage stability as a test case. Perhaps in the future we can do more, but for this moment we stick to probabilistic damage stability. 
basically to let the computer automatically sort out, or sort out what's the optimal uh, amount and distribution of bulk heads and deck. Uh, the, the, we already had a similar thing in place in 2004. There was a compact paper for this is the link, but this was only aimed at the position of the bulk heads and decks and not at their uh, amount and on the topology. And this demonstrates our prolonged desire to employ uh, artificial intelligence uh, where useful. And again, this is uh, being developed by a graduate student. Uh, Doris, perhaps you can stand up. So if people have questions to you in, in the, in the, in the yeah, break. Yeah, all the questions during the break to me over the volunteer that I think can leave. Yeah. Okay, thank you. And then people ask ChatGPT. I cannot uh, look into the future, but still want to say th something uh, about it. Uh, this falls in the category of artificial, uh, of, no, sorry, of generative artificial intelligence. Uh, intelligence it generates something, and generative AI can be used to generate uh, text or music or images. Uh, and in principle, I see no reason why it could not uh, generate ship designs. Uh, then we can have all have a long break. Um, however, training a contemporary large language model. Uh, which is used for chat uh, GTP re requires big data, re really big data, a stack of uh, 10,000 meters of fully printed A4 paper. And one training session costs some millions of dollars only on energy. So application on ship design might be compelling, uh, yet it is not, uh, I think, really a profession, uh, pr pr professionally possible. For this moment, you, you, you never know what the future will bring. But we simply don't have a million examples, sh ship designs to learn from. And certainly not a million ship designs which are available in digital format that can be read by an artificial intelligence engine. So uh, we are interested, but following uh, this development. Having said that, we are involved in a new research program uh, where we will, I will tell you a little, little bit more later on, where one of the partners brings in its large language model. So perhaps. We see uh, if something comes out of it. We will see what that is. What Four that decades is. now. This is Bastian, our programmer. The Pascal programming language to produce our software. Pascal has worked very well for us, but the world is moving on, and so are we. Over the years, we have extended Pascal's service life with tiny bits of assembly language. And, and we have, we have upgraded, upgraded the fairway user, user interface by manually rewriting it in C++. Still, Still around, around half a million, million lines, lines of our code, code remain written in Pascal, and, and that, that needs to be replaced with a modern alternative. C++, C++ though, though, despite being well known, has quite some drawbacks. And for, and for us, C++, C++ is, is not optimal as a general-purpose general programming language. language. The solution has found is found in the D programming language, which improves on C and C++ in many ways. In its design, D draws also inspiration from Pascal. Now, manually translating half a million lines of code into D is not an option. It would take way too long and also require a lot of validation. More importantly, More importantly, our software development goes on each and every hour, hour and we cannot, cannot interrupt that. The translation, the translation effort must happen in, in parallel, parallel to the ordinary software development. development. So, so an automated, automated translation, translation process is needed, using, using what is called a transpiler. transpiler. Alas, Alas, a transpiler, a transpiler from, from D into Pascal did not exist. Therefore, we had to develop one in-house, an effort that has taken over four years, on the, On the previous SART user, user day, we already, already announced that we were going to do this. Well, well we, have we have been working tirelessly on this process, process and, and we can report that the process is nearly finished. finished. We are we currently, currently in the testing phase. The funny, funny thing, thing is, is that, that once we finalize the switch, switch users, users won't even notice the difference. We are undertaking this endeavor as an investment, investment. Extending, extending the longevity of Pius, local Pius, and SARC into, into the next decades. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> Bastian started a little bit earlier than I expected. Uh, he is working for us uh, on 
and, and, and other basis, another programming basis, as he just explained. That he is living and working from Trondheim. Uh, so this is m his message from the north. Okay, then my last section on collaboration and interfacing. Um, all of you know the existence of Fairway. If you know, want to know more details, then you could go to the afternoon session from Bart, who will be uh, explaining a little bit more about that. Um, but Fairway is never the end. Once you have defined a, a designed a whole form, you should bring it to other software. Most people used uh, Rhino for that. Um, and we made a little uh, modification on the Fairway export function to support Rhino in that respect. Um, most of people use uh, uh, NURBS in Rhino. I'm not going to elaborate on NURBS services. I have done that already for the last 20 years. So either you know it or you're not interested. Um, but we found a, 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 a different approach, a better approach, which, which has become the Faraday module of Pius, which allows to work from an irregular curved network. Uh, the program generates curved faces between the, uh, the, 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 the network lines uh, surrounding the faces. And those faces are filled by curved surfaces. That's, a, that's, the, that's the essence of uh, Fairway. Still, we are left with conversion. Uh, if this is a part of a Fairway service, or that is a part of a Fairway service, then uh, it should be transferred to conventional NURB services to be imported by a CAT system, for example, by Rhino. And this is an example of that, already more than 20 years old. And it looks nice, um, but it's not. Uh, because if you look very, very uh, sharply, then you see that there are sometimes some gaps between adjacent patches. And the gaps can be very small. That's the reason we d didn't see that on the, on, the green, uh, on, the, on the green image. But if you zoom in, then you can see gaps of, for example, uh, one thousandth of a millimeter. And in practice, the gaps uh, don't have any effect. But for some computer programs, such as Rhino, they, they, it, it's a problem. They simply fail on this because they see two uh, surfaces that are not connected to each other. Um, so that's a problem. And that's, um, that's basically a problem of Rhino. So if we make this distribution of surfaces and send it to Rhino, then it always complains uh, there are uh, gaps, not one gap, usually 20 or 40 or something. And it's quite, quite tedious. So what we did is uh, making another algorithm, which is called the lowest effective amount of NURBS. And it is subdividing the whole surface, uh, uh, the whole surface in four-sided region and letting that algorithm do the job. Uh, so these are the larger areas, uh, which can be filled with one NURBS um, surface. And the software is computing the uh, shape at the edges uh, in a fashion that no gaps exist. Simply no gaps exist. How this works is not interested at, and, and interesting at this moment. And it's explained in, a, in, in the papers. And you can find that on our website. But this is an uh, example of uh, the effort we take to make uh, interfacing at as smoothly as possible. Well, this is an example of a ship converted from uh, Fairway to Rhino. This is its di distribution in uh, four-sided regions and NURBS patches. This is another, this, and, and this is the same shape in, uh, in Rhino. Another uh, interface issue we encounter is with containers. And this, for this, uh, this applies to local PIS. Uh, there is a uh, standard called BAPLI. It's a file standard for exchange of container information. Uh, it's uh, issued by this uh, ship message design group. And unfortunately, there are two versions which are uh, mutually different. So it's not that version 3 is uh, the sequel to 2, and that 3 contains everything that 2 contains, but they have gone a, a, a separate direction, unfortunately. But uh, OK, we support it. Um, 
uh, we, 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 we included bu uh, bubbly support in local bias in uh, 1985 and 1995, and we rejuvenated that in 2022 with all container types according to the ISO standard on containers. And that is quite an amount. Uh, the, the container is, is, is not standard. The only standard thing is that they are rectangular, and apart from that, you can encounter each and every dimension. So these are the, uh, uh, th this is a screenshot of local PIAs. These are uh, ISO container standards, and uh, this is what the user, user can click on. Unfortunately, some shipping lines use custom codes for containers. I don't know why, but they simply do that. And to support also those uh, non-standard uh, file format, uh, local PIAs has been equipped with a feature to define and convert non-standard codes. Um, so this is a list a user can see, and here he can uh, define his own non-standard uh, container f uh, dimension code and to which ISO standard this corresponds. On top of that, there is a module for IMDG validation. Uh, that's IMDG is the International Maritime Data Insurance Good, GOAT. It was developed as an international code for the maritime transport of dangerous goods, uh, chemicals, basically, or explosive, but ma mostly chemicals. And uh, this uh, IMDG code has rules on the segregation of gar cargo and restrictions in their placement. And some of you, and, and, uh, some of you working in shipping may know this uh, table, where here are different IMDG categories and the restrictions that are imposed by them. And for that we, defined, uh, we, we designed an IMDG validation tool which is based on an external commercial library. So there's a company uh, who is specialized in this uh, matter. They uh, issue or they sell a library and that's linked to uh, local bias. And the advantage for us to using that external library is that this is regularly updated once a year usually. And there are two fair versions of this uh, validation tool. One uh, linked with local bias, and the other one as generic IMDG validation tool. So this is the local bias version, and here it says, here two containers are in the vicinity of, their, of, of each other, and they have uh, each have their own chemicals uh, loaded, and the right column says whether that's allowed or whether it's not allowed. We um, defined a motions module on ship motions, um, based on the strip, uh, strip theory, uh, and that's completely linked with uh, PIAS uh, hull shape definition and compartment uh, definition. You might wonder, is SARC with this development going into the direction of uh, specialized hydrodynamic uh, software? And the answer is no. Uh, we stick with this strip theory program because it fits uh, in the design suit that PIAS is, because in the vast majority of cases, strip theory is sufficient. But for more complicated calculations, uh, we still have interfaces to specialize software, for example, for mar marine freight in ship mode or freight call. Uh, but nevertheless, a strip theory ship motion program is a useful addition to PIAS. Well, this is the output of the strip theory uh, program. It's not so interesting. It's just to show you that it exists. Another interface uh, standard is XML PIAS. XML is a language for structuring information in files, but it still needs a domain-specific dictionary for uh, application. So we made an a dictionary, for example, where the length between perpendiculars is put in that file, and this looks a, lit a little bit cumbersome, but this is a computer file. Eh? This is used to be consumed by computers. And uh, the advantage is that you don't need a separate manual for reading these codes because everybody can understand what is molded depth, for example. Uh, we are using XML uh, much more frequently uh, from all kinds of, uh, of PIAS uh, software. And uh, the third line, for example, one customer of, of uh, PIAS used the XML route to compile damage Stability overviews according to uh, their own preference and their own design, because that's the advantage uh, of this route. You can make whatever you like, and you can change this whenever you want. Um, it also has a downside. You 
can make whatever you like. So you can do it yourself. You don't have to call Bussum. Of course, you are free to do so, and then we can make something, but that comes with a price and with a delivery time. Um, by using XML, you can, yeah, if you invest the time in that, you have full control over the output or whatever you want. Another uh, example of do-it-yourself is, uh, is an add-on uh, on the uh, layout ship uh, subdivision plan. There is a rough layout coming out, the PIAS module, uh, and it, that can serve as an underlying layer for general arrangement plan, uh, but it needs to be completed with deck houses, cranes, etc., etc., etc. And a uh, student of uh, NHL Leeuwarden uh, made a uh, Python tool for that. That, 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 that can be employed for this uh, purpose. It is not something we are selling. Uh, it is even not complete. It's even not uh, completely uh, free from defects. But it's it is another example of something you can do by yourself. You don't always have to call Bussum for that. And it gives you full uh, control over what you do. And this is, uh, this is what comes out of the BIOS module and uh, subdivision, blah, blah, blah. and this is what the student tool has uh, created. And the student made this in uh, three weeks. Well, it was a gifted student, but as an example from nothing in Python. Uh, so he uh, reads this Pius plan and, well, completes it to a little bit of uh, elementary, but nevertheless, general arrangement plan. And then this, uh, I think this is the last one project I already uh, announced. There is, uh, we are contributing to an EU Horizon project. So the Horizon is a research program for you from the European Union. And a uh, project has been conceived which is called Smart European Shipbuilding. And its goal is developing an integrated platform, uh, platform for an integrated solution incorporating computer-aided engineering, design, manufacturing, and PLN, that's a product lifecycle management software and testing in shipyards. And uh, this is the website where you can find more details on that. These are the companies that are contributing. It just uh, started. So we hope this is a four-year project, and we hope that some fruitful research, uh, results will uh, result uh, f f from this. Notably, uh, further establish link between Pius and Catmatic. Uh, for the constituting uh, meeting, I was in uh, Norway last week. And that was uh, very nice. And now we come to the section of holiday pictures. So I will end this presentation, give the word to Mark. The end. Thank you, uh, Herbert. Um, next up is uh, Mark Visser. So if you can uh, come forward, then we can start your presentation. Zet die aan? Ja. Test. Hm? So, uh, good morning. Welcome for uh, part two of the morning presentations. Um, my name is Mark Visser, and um, in my presentation I would like to uh, go more into detail on two uh, sections of this uh, diagram, as was explained by uh, Herbert in the previous presentation. And for the, the first part will be about uh, the section support, and the second part will be about the implementation. Um, so in the first part, we, uh, uh, I want to tell you about the support SARC provides, in, in what way and what does it include. So we start uh, easy with this man. He purchased our software. Uh, he just opened the box and, well, he seems happy. Um, 
but uh, he purchased Pius, but um, what about support and updates? So uh, when you purchase Pius, you can purchase it in three uh, commercial uh, variants. The first is uh, including lifetime support and updates. So in this case, support and updates are purchased directly together with the Pius software. Uh, secondly, with support and updates, um, where you uh, purchase the software and uh, pay a fee per year for updates and support. And thirdly, a rare variant uh, where you buy Pius with no support and updates. And in addition to these uh, variants, it's possible to purchase Pius um, with updates and no support, so the, the green line, um, but not the other way around. So we do not offer support without updates, as our support is always on the latest version of well, the software. Uh, additionally, it's good to mention it's also possible to rent Pius, uh, but in the rent monthly rental fee, uh, updates and supports are always included. And for local Pius, our loading computer software, uh, a training and support is always included on purchase and no annual fees are applicable. Um, so if uh, Pius is purchased by a new customer, often a training by a SARC employee is arranged on delivery. Uh, typically, this consists of a training, one to three day, uh, tra days of training, depending on the purchase functionality, of course. This training can be arranged in our office or in the office of the customer. Uh, and also possible online via Teams, TeamViewer. Um, this initial uh, PIAS training is also available uh, online for self-study. And this can be very helpful for introduction or possibly a new colleague who has to must work with the software or uh, or for yourself as a refreshment. Um, and for this training, we can provide you with a uh, link to an online training document. Uh, and this is a complete training, including exercises uh, and links to uh, supporting online videos. Um, so eventually, three levels of training um, should, be com should become available. And level one, um, teaches the elementary aspects of, uh, of uh, Pius, of our software. Level 2 elaborates on details, um, and this training should be sufficient for anyone with a, with a naval engineering background to, and after this training you should be able to uh, well, model a vessel in Pius, define the geometry and perform, uh, define loading conditions and perform uh, damage and uh, intact stability and strength calculations. And finally, we have the uh, advanced section, um, which will cover some more advanced uh, functions, such as uh, hopper stability uh, uh, or probabilistic damage stability. And at this moment, level one is um, finished and available. Level two will be available uh, before the end of this year, in a few months, and level three is under development. Um, Besides this uh, initial training, uh, of course, other more specific courses can also be arranged uh, at SARC or on your location. We do this on a regular basis, and some examples of courses and training we provided in the past are a uh, general course on intact damage stability, probabilistic damage stability, uh, inland waterway uh, uh, vessel stability, and hull form manipulation and modeling with fairway. And these um, courses can be held in individually or in uh, groups and can be uh, completely tailored to the specific application or, or the uh, level and preference of the user. Um, so if you are a, a user of uh, local Pius and or a user of Pius including uh, the support, we can provide support via email. Um, but you can also speak directly to a uh, SARC employee by phone on a help desk. Uh, for some time now, we have a dedicated uh, email address for uh, support, support at SARC, uh, 
.nl. Um, and you can use this address directly or uh, uh, submit a form on our website where you can also uh, fill in some more details and directly attach your files um, if required. And you will receive a confirmation and a reference which is also used for further reference uh, and correspondence. Um, well, our software is made as self-explanatory as possible. Um, but sometimes if something is more complicated, unclear or new, uh, it's always a good idea to uh, check the manual first. And both Pius and local Pius come with an in extensive manual with um, an integrated uh, reader accessible with the F1 key from well, almost every location in the program. And it immediately opens on the relevant page um, and uh, furthermore, this manual is, of course, also available in, in PDF format and online on our website. Um, should I update? Um, on the internet, these pie charts go around reflecting that um, most people do not bother to update if everything is working fine. Uh, another restriction we are aware of is that um, it's not so easy for uh, everyone to just download and install um, an update. Some companies have strict policy on this and do not allow a user uh, to install applications um, or updates. And that can then only be done by an ICT department, which can be complicated. Um, so should you update? And the answer is uh, yes, you should. And the next question would be when would you update and um, how often? In any case, uh, on a regular basis, uh, Pius is constantly uh, being improved and expanded. And even some typographical errors or an, a new auxiliary function is uh, nice to have. So I would advise once every six months, but at least uh, once, a, uh, once a year. And then um, another update moment would be with a significant um, extension or modification of the of Pius, of which you will be informed by uh, us by a newsletter or social media. This might also be a trigger for intermediate um, or additional update of your software, if this uh, modification is of relevance to you. Uh, Another uh, update moment is when you un unexpectedly encounter an issue or an error or a bug in the software. Uh, in this case, it's of importance that you first check if you have the latest version because, uh, well, obviously it might possibly some be something that already has been improved or fixed by us. Um, where do I get it? The, the, from each module under the toolbar option help and then uh, program date and version. You can check current version and uh, also uh, from the Pius main menu. Um, I will show it later. You can check the version and get information on the latest available version uh, we have available in our cloud, which can be reached on cloud.sarc.nl. Uh, here you can uh, log in with your uh, credentials and after login you can download the latest version and furthermore an overview of your licenses is available here in a Word document format. Um, and this cloud can also be used to exchange files with SARC. So, um, another form of support we uh, provide is that we provide Pius and local Pius to miscellaneous educational institutes in the form of a non-commercial campus license. For example, uh, Hogeschool Rotterdam, Hogeschool Leeuwarden, Delft University are using uh, Pius, but also foreign universities in China, Poland, Italy, Turkey, and other countries. Uh, also multiple demo versions of uh, local Pius uh, are in use um, for education 
Uh, for example, the Nova College in uh, the Netherlands uses local pious for education and even uh, in their exams. Um, furthermore, the, as the entire um, uh, fleet of Dutch Navy vessels is equipped with local pious, uh, at KMTO, the, the Navy Technical um, was the Navy Navy Technical Training School uh, in Den Helder. Every year, four training sessions uh, of one week are arranged for their officers and sub officers who need to work with um, the software on board the vessels. So, in this way, we help to uh, prepare students and. Uh, possibly your future colleagues and ship crew with knowledge on pious and local pious. Uh, support also um, consists of uh, informative or error messages the program presents to uh, the user. And this is not an example from pious, it's just, uh, but nevertheless, uh, program messages could be improved here and there in pious and local pious. And recently, we have developed. Uh, a common error reporting system, abbreviated as SER. And SER is an internal system in PIAS and so far only implemented in the module hydro tables. Uh, but it will be added everywhere in PIAS. And the main purpose is uh, to streamline all the error and informative messages and to have more uh, unity also inside. Um, and in the source code, uh, in, in, in the, inside in the source code, um, when the module produces error messages by using SER. Um, and these will then be presented in a standard way. I will show you an example what it looks like. Um, so here you see a simple input screen for uh, a hydrostatic table. And I made two, uh, two input errors or uh, the, the start value is 5 and the end value is 3. That would not be allowed and I made a duplicate trim. Um, so if I want to print this table, um, this, uh, th this um, uh, share menu pops up um, and, um, and the errors are reported. The messages will be uh, grouped by um, origin. And the color you see here indicates what kind of message it is. So red is an error, orange is a warning. And additionally, the number of times a message is given, uh, if, and if available, a link to the relevant section in the manual uh, is given in the toolbar. And um, SER can provide additional information. If you click on extra info, you get uh, more specified information on the error. So specified value 5 is bigger than end. Ah, we're back at the, at the diagram for part 2 of my presentation, where we step from the support uh, section to the outer ring, which represents the implementation layer. Mm -hmm. And this layer consists of many segments that are available or visible to the PIAS and local PIAS users. And I will now discuss some relevant uh, segments of this layer, which are related to recent developments in PIAS and local PIAS. So I prepared this slide, the old uh, versus the new PIAS menu, because it very well uh, reflects one of the major changes of PIAS over uh, the years, as you can see on the left in the old menu, pre-2016, PIAS was divided in many uh, distinct modules, each for a specific task. And in the past years, more and more uh, relevant modules were combined and restructured. And this results in a new uh, PIAS structure, which consists of more concentrated sets of modules, as is reflected by the menu, uh, new menu on the right. The, the PIAS menu now also includes uh, an interactive news button, which will alert you if a news update has been released uh, by SARC. And this button takes you then directly to the, to the news section on the website. And the version info button shows you the version of your current PIAS version. And um, 
It if you click it, it gives information on the latest available version in the cloud. So you can see uh, uh, what the date is uh, of the latest version. Uh, if you see an exclamation mark in this um, button, it means that your software is over six months old. And then you are advised to update your software. Uh, we also made changes related to the organization of the Pyre software distribution and protection. Um, up to a few months ago, we had one specific uh, software version or package for every single user of Pyre's, which you can see here in a schematic layout. Um, so each module for a single customer was built from the Pyre source code together with some user-specific information, the part on the left, um, and these, uh, the, the, for example, what, what, the, what modules were purchased, and these uh, were then combined in an installer package and made available in the cloud for that specific user. Um, available options in the purchase modules and the license quantities were arranged by the licenses which are programmed in the hard or software lock for which we use the code meter dongle you see on the right or the software lock. Um, we have changed this and from the Pius source code we now build one uh, generic Pius version which is, so which is identical for everyone and all uh, specific information is now moved to the dongle and this has the, the following benefits. Um, it's, this is compatible with the modern build tools as Herbert uh, said we are changing to D and it's, it's, uh, D uses DUB, um, a build tool for the software, and this, and this is more compatible. The whole process is um, less complex and much easier to maintain. And due to the significantly reduced build time, so we now make only one version is, instead of uh, two, three hundred times a separate build, it's much faster to produce a new Pius release. And of course, you can imagine this saves a lot of uh, storage and data backup. And uh, with similarity to uh, Pius, we have also restructured our local Pius software organization distribution. Uh, again, from the Pius source, uh, instead of a user-specific local Pius for each individual user, we, we now build uh, one general generic um, <coughs> local Pius version that contains all uh, possible uh, functionality. And different from Pius is that local Pius does not work with a hard or a software lock, uh, but only works for a specific vessel uh, by checking the files containing the ship uh, specific data. And for, the, for this user specific information, together with the license information, we, have now, we now use an encrypted uh, license uh, file. And this has well, um, the following um, benefits. Uh, the license file allows us to add additional functionality without the need for reapproval by classification, as we can simply reuse the local Pius software and simply add additional license uh, for the added functionality in the license file. And it's now uh, possible to limit a license in time. Uh, what, which is needed, for example, for the IMDG uh, container module extension where we use the third-party library, uh, as was discussed in the previous presentation. And that is arranged per annual subscription. Um, for the next subject, let me introduce two Pius modules. Sounding was a, a separate module and mainly used for local Pius to compute tank capacities um, and centers of gravity for any list and trim combination. Uh, optional with a temperature correction to account for expansion of um, cargo or, tank or the tank structure itself. And recently the sounding module has been uh, integrated into the loading module. Uh, the loading module is the module to define loading conditions calculate intact uh, and damage stability and strength. And a loading condition contains of 
list of weight items and in this list of weight items you know we have now um, you have now uh, for defined tanks three columns have been added and uh, here the user can enter the value of a measuring instrument so this and this can be a sounding urge and the pressure or a pressure and in the other two columns you specify a uh, list and trim used for this measurement and with these values the tank content is then um, calculated it is possible to uh, define um, multiple sounding pipes for example if a, if a tank has a manual sounding pipe and a tank radar um, and also the loading module now can be uh, this was already possible for sounding but the loading module can now be extended with an option to use temperature correction tables you can uh, use a simple correction table per degree um, or select one of the standard and predefined ASTM or NINOS tables for heated hydrocarbons. Um, and furthermore, loading can be extended with the functionality to print sounding tables and cargo urge report. This is the graphical loading extension crane used for uh, simulations of crane operations and also suitable for uh, tandem uh, hoist operations as, sh as shown on the picture on the, on the right. Originally this extension uh, consisted of a te text menu in PIUS and in the PIUS loading module and this graphical interface was only available for uh, local PIUS. As, Sar as SARC we had to prepare the data for the graphical interface and this has been uh, modified and now this GUI is also available for PIUS users. Also the crane data has been uh, restructured and is now split in fixed and variable data. So from the weight item list in loading you now have access to a menu where you can define all the fixed data uh, for one or more cranes so it's dimensions, the weights of the different parts, the centers of gravity, and even the uh, safe working load tables. And you can see this as a database of um, uh, with all the fixed crane data. And in another menu, also available from the wait list, you um, can define the variable data of the crane for loading condition. So you and here you uh, uh, this loading condition crane refers to uh, a database crane uh, and then set all variable values such as the topping angle, slewing angle, weight in the hook, etc. And these vari uh, variable values can also be set in the UE uh, for crane. Um, and the crane in the loading condition always uh, keep, uh, keeps the reference to the database crane so if you change something to a database crane, it will also change in the loading conditions. Uh, then um, this is the uh, container lashing module, is a recently finished extension of uh, our container module for calculation of the forces and accelerations. A software development kit from uh, DNV called Stolash is used. Um, the lashing module has, fun has functions to uh, define the connections between the containers and the, the ship, like lashing rods, uh, chains and ropes, so that Stolash can compute the resulting forces. And in the bottom right window you see the, these results are shown in combination with the conclusion on compliance with the DNV rules. And the 2D uh, window on the left allows for all the basic functions such as a new lashing um, connection, remove, copy, paste, and create or remove equalizing devices, etc. The 3D uh, rotatable uh, rendered view on the right shows the entire bay, including lashing devices, and is intended for well, inspection and presentation. The lashing uh, there are two types of output for the uh, lashing module. On the left you see the lashing forces report 
showing a list of the de lashing details, including the lashing forces and the verification against the maximum allowable values. And uh, on the right, you see crew lashing plan. Uh, this is an alternative to lashing manual. It doesn't contain computation results, but um, the lashing equipment is clearly visible with indications which specific lashing devices are to be used. Um, we have implemented double buffering in uh, Pius and local Pius. This makes drawing to the screen smoother and less flickering, which is a good thing anyway, but uh, especially looking at our future plans to have multiple graphical windows and menus open at the same time, uh, the use of multi-buffering will be essential for the future. And here you see side to side the effect of uh, double buffering in the module for um, loading uh, general cargo in, uh, in local pires while moving some cargo around. On the left side uh, is before, obviously before we implemented double buffering, and on the right, um, well, is using double buffering. And uh, double buffering sounds harder than it actually is. In a single buffered application, you uh, draw straight to the video memory. And depending on the refresh rate of your monitor, the user will see changes to the pixels directly. Well, as you draw them, as, as, uh, as you draw them, the application draws them, and this can cause flickering because um, sometimes it might not uh, been completely drawn when the screen is refreshed. And the theory of double buffering is that you use two buffers for this. In this picture, I call them one and two. Uh, the user is looking at the display, which shows contents of buffer one, uh, and the application is drawing. Happy, yes, is drawing to buffer two. And when the application is done drawing, the contents of buffer one and two are swapped. So, um, in this way, th uh, the user doesn't notice any, any intermediate or incomplete drawings, uh, but only sees the changes as soon as the buffers are swapped and the screen is refreshed. And this process is, of course, well, constantly repeating itself. Um, user re uh, some, some additions to Pius and local Pius origin from uh, a specific user request. So the programming is initialized by the specific needs of a customer. But once uh, finished, the functionality can, can be of general use for multiple other users. An example of this is uh, uh, ICE module. This extension was made on request of the Dutch Navy. ICE module extension shows a, a 3D uh, view of the vessel, which is divided into uh, multiple areas, which can be graphically selected by the user. And for the selected area, you can um, define the thickness of the aggregated ice. Uh, the weight and the center of gravity of the ice from the waterline up is then calculated and added to the weight list and in this way taken into account for your calculations. And this module is now available uh, also for other users and commercial vessels. For this module, however, a fairway model with all the areas for ice defined is required. For a customer um, whose uh, vessel was uh, under DNV approval, DNV requested verification of the draft against um, the so-called ice belt. The ice belt is a reinforced part of the ship uh, hull at the level of the waterline, and this has been implemented in Pius. At the definition of draft marks in Pius, a new type of mark, the, the ice belt, can be defined, and you can define multiple over the length of the ship. And for each mark, an upper and lower boundary uh, is defined. So in the, in the GUI, you see the ice belt uh, is shown together with the verification if the actual waterline is within the ice belt. Um, one of our customers who designs naval vessels was interested in the longitudinal strength of a vessel in damaged condition. And so far they did this manually. So first they performed the uh, damage stability calculations and then manually transferred the volumes and specific weights 
for the final stage of the damage compartments to the intake loading condition, and this process uh, is now automated in Pius, and this saves them a lot of time. And uh, this functionality is available for purchase for all Pius users. Uh, the, the picture on the right is for illustration showing the USS Cole with the si large side damage which was attacked by uh, uh, suicide bombers in a small boat in 2000. Um, the envelope curve made on request of my uh, former colleague Egbert van Eiken, who is here also in the audience. Um, um, with this new function, an envelope curve is constructed uh, combining all minimum and maximum occurring values of shear forces and uh, bending moments for a selected range of loading conditions. So on this sheet you see the output of this function, besides this uh, graphical output also a numerical table can be printed and this um, envelope curve are especially useful in the design stage, as this quickly gives you an overview how to construct your vessel, so the maximum allowable f uh, values will not be exceeded in any uh, loading condition. Um, the Wolverine terminals ordered a rail barge at Dahmer shipyards, and as a subcontractor of Dahmer, we have supplied uh, local buyers for this barge with some specific modifications on client's request. Uh, here you see an artist's impression of, the, of this rail barge. The, the, uh, it's 140 meter long and it will be deployed at the port with the uh, intriguing name uh, Port of Prince Rupert, located in the west coast of Canada. And um, it will there connect to an existing aquatrain terminal uh, to load uh, 24 fuel rail cars. And then this rail barge will then be moved to a nearby mooring site using tugs. Um, and here the fuel is transferred to a smaller distribution barge, which it will then uh, visit and service the vessels at their mooring location in the port. And two modifications were made uh, for this project. Local pilots can now read a local uh, type table which is then in combination with the um, date and time set for the loading condition used by the uh, ship's crew to ballast the barge within the required range for the uh, to, uh, to connect to the uh, train terminal. And another modification is that we made a so-called uh, snapping function in the row row module uh, cargo loading tool uh, with which the fuel rail cars can be easily positioned or snapped to predefined locations on the, the barge. So here you see in, in top view the graphical interface of the row, row module with the rail tracks in white and red as the obstacles and uh, the rail cars are positioned using this snap function. Um, I would like to uh, finish my presentation with the smallest level of modifications, which do, however, take a considerable part of our time. For the software development, we use a source control system uh, called Subversion, and every change to the source code, which are often multiple per day, are uh, by one of our programmers, is registered in this system. Uh, with a short description of uh, the changes, and these include, of course, the bigger changes but and extensions to the software, but besides this also uh, a lot of smaller, less significant uh, changes work for a few minutes or hours, like correcting typographical error or an incorrect translation, a simple bug fix, or changing a program pop-up message. So what you see here is just a small part covering four days, of this endless list of in total uh, approximately 28,000 commit messages since we start with this system in uh, 2010. And yeah, of course I will not discuss all the changes in detail, but it, demonstrates, it just demonstrates how many little things we're also changing and improving on a daily basis. And this concludes my presentation.
thank you for your time and attention. And are there questions? Yeah, we still have some uh, time left before lunch, so if you have a question, please raise your hand and uh, we will try to answer it. Or uh, ought to have it about the previous presentation. Jan. Um, yeah, have you ever uh, reconsidered um, yeah, presenting release notes uh, on a different pious version? Because I, sometimes it's a bit hard to determine when to to switch over to a new version. And yeah, release notes could help. Uh, yeah, if they indicate certain bug bug fixes, uh, then yeah, that's yeah. Uh, quite important information yeah. uh, for me to know when. It's a good question. Uh, the, the, yeah. It's a good question. I understand why you, what, that you want to know, but it's it's a bit as you see on this on this list uh, here. The, it, it, the the list is endless. Uh, it's it's everything, and, and and well, you would also not be happy with the list saying uh, I made a translation uh, fix fix for something. <laughs> um, so what we do is on on if if a major if 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 something is updated that is significantly to to the users we, we yeah we distribute this in the in the newsletter and on the social media and then and that yeah so that's what i said it's good to update once uh, every 6 months or once a year and and keep an eye on those newsletters and uh, and for intermediate changes that uh, yeah yeah. And the newsletter of the news items on the website certainly help uh, yeah. help a lot. That, yeah. uh, and also true. you are notified by the uh, by the menu now that there is a new newsletter. So uh, this, you don't have to constantly go to the SARC website and look. But if you start by us and you see an exclamation mark in the menu, you can yeah have a look and yeah. yeah. There's, but there's no some kind of automated system to. Uh, have these release notes uh, or something? Yeah, and, and I understand that manually it's very hard. Well, we we can of course dump this in a file and, mm. and but in some kind of structured way. The, the, then everything you you write in here sometimes it's very cryptical or it, it's even in sometimes in Dutch or in and and sometimes it's really programming programmer language, um, which will then be then of no use to you as a as a pious user. And uh, yeah, other question which relates a bit to this one um, is a distributed installing of the software. I'd, that would be uh, one thing that would help in what? just updating our version in the office and updating it. Uh, yeah, some dozens of, of computers. Uh, yeah, they have some standardized distributing system with some kind of. Application package uh, uh, which you can yeah we we we, we there is a, a distribution mechanism I know yeah that is not I I had a look at it but that uh, would not work in our IT environment mm -hmm. let's say uh, so yeah we're looking to other possibilities but not yeah. didn't find any any yet but yeah we of course we have the same issue uh, in our office because we all we also have the version and we have multiple updates per per week and um so we we all work from a local location but it's on startup it's copied from one central location where we put the update so that's a very simple uh, solution and the, and the other solution, what, but you already know this, is that in the Pius menu, uh, the, the Pius menu can check if there is a new version uh, of Pius available in, in, on a location in your network. You can define that, and if it's available, the, the menu will update the local version, close itself, restart, and then you have also the update. But uh, does that support m uh, multi running multiple versions of Pius simultaneously? That, that, um, not as it is at the moment. Okay. It supports yeah. one version. You can define one uh, in the registry of the of the client computers. You can define one location where you can put the update on the network, and one location, local location, where you can copy it to. Okay. Yeah. But this, yeah. Uh, 
we can discuss this because it's it, it would be an extension of this functionality. Yeah, still but have to see if this functionality will work at at that moment when. But I then, you, but that, that's yeah. a, the problem will remain. Which, which version do you want, <laughs> or is it per per client computer? You can uh, you can say I have user A and he needs this version, but then you get a management system, uh, but you can control it by the value in the r registry per computer. Per computer, it's okay. Yeah, but why? 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 Just curious. Why would you have m multiple versions then? Uh, well, sometimes we have some projects uh, which still we use uh, an, an older PS version uh, uh, for specific projects, uh, uh, and that's a decision uh, that's made in this mm -hmm. project. Uh, yeah, which version to use? Yeah. Uh, also to make the final booklets and uh, to, yeah. to not interrupt this this process. So and but of course we want to keep on moving uh, and and use new peers versions mm -hmm. with new functions. Uh, so that yeah, in yeah, general in, we, in, we in use general uh, it should be upwards compatible. Of course, but uh, yeah, sometimes that's uh, difficult in in some some mm -hmm. of our projects. So uh, in general we use two different uh, peers versions. Sometimes even three, but. Of course, try to limit the number of uh, PS versions in use, but mm -hmm. in general, there will be two. Uh, yeah. Yeah. But, yeah, but if you if you really want to do that, I wouldn't, I wouldn't advise it. But if you really want it, you can manage this by the res registry settings for for each client computer. So okay, so that it's manageable per computer. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, or manually by yourself by copying the correct version. With the startup script, uh, uh, when you when you log in with your computer, okay. Now, that some distributing install would, would help maybe in mm -hmm. the future uh, yeah. for that pro to manage that process. Yeah. Uh, okay. Thank you, uh, Mark. Thank you, Jan. <laughs> uh, in the back, Bart has the question. Yeah, I know, but would you aanstellen. like to share with the audience um, how many people you have working on this uh, large to-do list? What, sorry, what? How many people do you have working on this to-do list? On this how many people list? are programming in uh, Sark? You haven't checked um, it Yeah, well, a lot, a lot, some of them are already listed here. It's, uh, it's, it's five, what is it, five, six? The programmers? So, uh, uh, yeah, Mark, Bastian, Guido, Herbert. I think you, you yourself will be there somewhere in between. Maria, uh, Johannes. Now I have to be careful not to forget every someone. <laughs> <laughs> uh, who feels forgotten now? Douwe, <laughs> Abraham. <laughs> Yeah, we, uh, all, uh, we are all working on this list, more or less. Uh, some people would more um, spend more time on this list, and some people spend more time on projects. But we all have a contribution to this to the software modifications. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Bart. Any other questions here in the back? I have a question on the ballast advice function. Um, you mentioned, or actually Herbert mentioned, that it is able to uh, calculate an optimal ballast condition based on required or desired trim um, uh, and uh, draft. When is it optimal? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, that's a, that's a very good, uh, very good question. I can give you an answer in a few seconds. Um, in general, uh, I must say that this ballast advice function is only the beginning, because you could include a lot of other aspects. For example, for example, sufficient stability. For example, sufficient strength. So this could be the beginning of uh, of a whole system, and that also applies to the criteria of optimality. Uh, but now a short answer. It's optimal uh, uh, with the uh, least amount of ballast water transfer because that goes as quick as possible. 
uh, and uh, requires the uh, uh, minimum amount of pumping energy. Uh, and there is other one, also one other optimization criterion, isn't it? But this is the, well, well, the, 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 this is the most regularly used uh, criterion. Okay, but so it's, it's least amount of uh, ballast water pumping, but it is, of course, open to other aspects that may be case dependent, or it's not just uh, not just that, there is always more behind it, so to say then. Yeah, okay. at this moment it's ballast water pumping, so given the existing situation, um, a minimum amount of ballast water pumping to a new situation, but other uh, criteria could be, or, 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 yeah, other criteria uh, could, could replace this one. But that's a matter of uh, discussion and negotiations, because I can come up with, I think, 20 or 30 optimization criteria, and also with dozens of aspects to be optimized, or boundary conditions. But that's a whole discussion. But again, sufficient stability is not an optimization criteria, but it can be a boundary condition. A ship should have sufficient stability and not necessarily more than sufficient stability. But this is what's implemented now in the ballast optimization function. Yes, thank you. It's also, it's also discussed in the, uh, in the local players uh, session in, in the afternoon. Or yeah, yeah uh, but this is, this is more about the future and the, yeah. and, and the capabilities of the optimization. Okay, thank you. Uh, you said in the introduction anything that floats and uh, with <laughs> the, the new upcoming uh, green uh, energy uh, wind uh, uh, things at sea, we see that uh, it's usually not so easy to define the, the weakest uh, axis uh, around what is the relative for stability. Do you have any tricks, tips, uh, hidden features that you can rotate models? Easily, that is uh, quite yeah, cumbersome now to do that by hand. There is in um, in the PIAS model there is no feature to rotate the model uh, because the, in in PIAS only the uh, sections, the, the the transfer sections are defined. Uh, on the other hand, Fairway has a complete uh, shell, a complete hull surface. So in Fairway, it's uh, possible to rotate a uh, model. We, we sometimes also use that, for example, uh, when we have defined a, a hopper in a split hopper barge to, uh, the, 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 to have a model of the, of the open, of the split condition. Uh, so that's the direct uh, answer. I have another answer. There is a function in uh, PIAS that automatically searches the weakest axis. So it's not a trick or uh, something hidden, but it's simply a function with a, it's on the price list. And it, uh, it, it, as essentially it makes stability calculations for a whole range of, uh, of uh, angles around which is heels, and then pick the lowest one and presents that one. Okay, thanks. Follow up on that, what does it do with the wind moment? Yeah, good, very good question. Uh, the, the wind moment is still in 2D. Yeah. So this could be extended, including a wind moment, because the combination of wind and stability can, can have a w different healing actions than only stability. So at this moment, it's uh, limited to stability only. But we developed this for a client that wanted this. Uh, the, 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 this calculation was uh, sufficient for that client, and it could be extended, including wind. We are capable of doing that, if somebody really uh, asks for it and pays. <laughs> Any more questions? No? Okay. Oh, no, well, no, no, no. still one. Yeah, this is regarding the, the online training that you mentioned. Uh, I understood that this is free. Uh, always that you've paid, of course, for a license or not? I'm sorry, I didn't... I didn't get regarding it. the online training. I've, on the online training? Yes. yes. It's, it's, it's available. Oh, sorry. It's available uh, online for free. For free for so uh, always that you have a license or uh, no, you don't need case. a license. It's oh, okay. uh, but of course it, it's convenient to have a pious license yeah, for <laughs> the exercises and the training. But <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay. For the rest, it's uh, yeah, so it's it's uh, sufficient if you send us uh, an email with the request and then we can sent you the training document. And I understand that level one, uh, it's or already available for everyone. 
for level every person that wants to use it. Level one is 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 is, is a general bias. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The I basics. Know. But uh, but it is already available online. But level two and level three, they are not all. Le level two is uh, almost finished. Mm -hmm. it will be in 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 the coming months. And level three is more advanced. That will be is in development. Is later. Okay. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. I think maybe uh, is uh, uh, Kazimir is it is it online also available for download or do you need? Uh, oh, there's a direct. Yeah, there's a direct link uh, on our website. But ah. um, if and if you're interested, you can also send us an email or call us, and then we will share it with you. It's all for free. Thank you for your question. No more questions. Then I think Butch. we can uh, yeah, start lunch. <laughs> Thank you, Mark.